the Canik TP9 Elite S. Let's check it out. If you've seen the new Canik TP9 Elite and wondered what the Elite S is, we're going to talk about it. In 2014, Canik introduced the TP9. Uh, it was a striker fire pistol. Um, it really was an exceptional firearm. The price was really reasonable, and a lot of people uh, bought these guns and have really enjoyed them. I mean, they are, they're just excellent guns. One of the big problems, though, with a lot of shooters was the decocker that was on the top of the slide. Uh, and a lot of people felt like that could be inadvertently bumped, which theoretically it could, but it was about a five to six pound uh, pull or pressure that took to push that to decock. Uh, it was the same thing on the Walther P99, which has the same kind of features. Uh, with that, Canik changed some things and began to do a double action model that would kind of circumvent the decocker and then ended up with the TP9SF, which did away with it altogether. Um, and that's one of the things about Canik, it's been very receptive and responsive to the shooter. So that's only been uh, coming on three years that they introduced the original, and now we're already to the TP9SF Elite. Um, this, I did a review on this gun a few months ago, and uh, it's just the top of the evolution of the TP9 line. Uh, there's a lot of cool things about the gun. Uh, this is not going to be a full review, guys. The big thing we're going to look at today, though, is the new... TP9 SF Elite S. And we're going to look at the differences. It's not a lot. It's a very slight difference. But if you ever see one or the other, now you're going to know. Magazines are removed out of both guns and the guns are safety checked. The TP9 SF Elite, the TP9 SF Elite S. If you'll notice right here, there's a lever. Originally I thought this was a magazine release, one of the paddle designs. But instead of going down, it goes in a up position, and this is actually a stop. So the S stands for stop, and this is a trigger stop. Uh, one of the pr reasons for this lever is that Canik received a government contract for the TP9 SF Elite, but they required to have a trigger stop uh, for the contract. But which is typical for many government contracts, they want to add that extra bit of safety, whether it's a grip safety or something like that. You know, even with the U.S. military, uh, adding a safety to the firearm is imperative for the gun to be accepted. And so because of that, and because the design was available, Canik decided to go ahead and release it to the U.S. market. But now what this does, it actually pushes up. There is a bar in between the two levers, and there's a lever on the other side as well. But there's a bar that runs in between and it actually blocks the trigger action. So there's no way that this will be able to fire. Uh, and that gives you an added bit of safety. And then once it's brought down, you can fire the pistol. With this up, of course, you can't. Now, it is a pretty hefty push to get that up. If you're carrying this like in a glove box, Maybe in a lady's purse, which you know you you would want a holster, but a lot of people just carry guns without holsters. Period. I mean that's just the way they do. It's not smart. It's not safe, but that's what they do. Uh, me in a glove box, I'll typically carry it without something. I might have a cover over it, but for ease of access, I might leave it. Now this gives you that added protection. Uh, when I post pictures on Instagram or Facebook, which I, I like to do because it gives me a kind of a consensus on what people are thinking, there were a lot of guys uh, just super opposed to this. It was like, this is a problem. This is going to be horrible. Uh, let me just say that if you've got a safety 
on the side of your pistol, it's going to be easier to engage than this trigger safety. That's just the way it is. It's just going to be much easier. So this is not something that's going to inadvertently get bumped any more than a standard frame mounted safety. Uh, now personally, I'm not a big fan of frame safeties now that striker fire pistols are out. Um, and if you have a safety on your pistol, whether it's a frame safety up here or at the trigger guard, uh, it's something you need to consider and train with. But one of the big pluses about this type safety is there are a lot of guys, in fact, to get a lot of messages about people that have never w just been comfortable getting on the striker fire bandwagon because there's just no safety on this gun except internally. Now, your finger is your number one safety, but it, they just don't feel comfortable carrying a gun with a round in the chamber and this being so easy just to push and to fire the pistol. And, and I can understand that with some people that just aren't accustomed to it. This would give you an extra amount of safety to be able to give you some comfort factor, give you a little confidence, and uh, which would be a great thing. So, you know, if you're going to store this or put it somewhere where you're not going to have it in a holster, or if you just don't feel comfortable with a standard striker fire, you'd like to have a striker fire, but you just can't get over the way this trigger is just exposed without an external safety, then this would be a great answer. If you don't like this type safety, and if you are violently opposed, which I've already seen it on Instagram, then just get the, the standard Elite because the Elite doesn't have it. So to me, this is just an additional offering that Canik is just putting out there for guys that find a use for this. If you don't like it, <laughs> by the elite. It's pretty simple. Now here I'm going to show some demonstration and being able to disengage the safety and to fire the pistol and how easy it is to do at the range. Typically I like to do it with my trigger finger. Uh, it's just right there real natural. I can disengage my safety and then go around to the trigger. Uh, I'm not in danger of firing the pistol because the safety is really far back. It's not in front of the trigger it's behind the trigger. So I'm bringing it down and then I can fire the pistol. Now, range time with the Elite S was very enjoyable. Um, I brought down about 150 rounds of ammunition and shot through it really quickly. Um, I didn't really plan on shooting that fast, but the trigger is so sweet. Um, it just makes it, you just keep hitting the steel no matter how fast you, you pull that trigger. So, you know, it was a really enjoyable gun, but so is the Elite. I mean, they're, they're just really well-made guns, and it's an evolution of the TP9 series. One of the great things about Canik is they're very responsive to shooters and to the American public as far as what they want in a pistol. And I'll tell you, that's one of the reasons why these are such great selling guns, aside from the price. I mean, the price is definitely a big factor, uh, but the quality is just really top notch. Uh, really, it's way above its pay grade, as I've said in other Canik videos. Here's the Elite, no bar. I can take, pull my trigger, and it fires. With the bar, I've got that added bit of safety. Personally, the Elite is my choice. This is what I would rather have, but I wouldn't feel super uncomfortable carrying it this way because I just had that little bit of a lead in, in the advantage of safety. So really the big thing is if you're a little bit more concerned about safety, if you're just not that confident carrying something like this, then this is a great answer. Again, the only difference between these two pistols is the safety, or what it is referred to as a stop. It's a trigger stop. I'll tell you what, guys, for the money, these are just great pistols. In fact, uh, these run, I've seen some actually for under $400. Uh, and then you can go up to about $439 is about the top end. Um, so the price is right on these. I mean, you're talking about, about $100 less than most of your premium striker fire pistols which gives you more money for ammunition. 
uh, one of the things we were doing is shooting the hot shot 9mm 115 grain. Uh, it was a steel case lead core ammo. That was also from Century Arms, which they actually import that ammunition. I don't shoot a lot of steel cased ammunition, but it functioned really well in these pistols. Uh, one of the things about the Canic, it does have the match grade barrel, so the accuracy is really great. And if you want to see the full review with disassembly, shooting, a lot of other things, check out the video on the Canic TP9SF Elite. I'll have it linked right here and down in the description below and at the end of the video. And I want to send a big thank you to Century Arms for sending the TP9SF Elite S to compare it with the Elite. Um, and to give you guys a little bit of insight on the difference. So if you're looking for a solid, dependable, inexpensive 9mm pistol, the Canic series is just really good, and with the Elite, these are excellent. Um, whether you go with the standard Canic Elite or you go with the Elite S, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. And if you don't like it, get the Elite. And if you don't like the Canic, then just don't buy it. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. started getting some people you know we just no, I'm not doing that this is no. then a standard frame frame the Canic TP9 Elite or the TP or the Canic T and the new PT9. if you want that you know that's um, 